Hello, this is R. Rats with Team 4545 League analyzing the game with Grenadier and McKnights. This was played in team event number 53 in the fourth round. Let's have a look. Okay, this is a decent opening for white to play. It uh, pretty much avoids all of black's routine responses. What was he going to play? A Petrov? Uh, was he going to allow a Lopez? A Schliemann? Who knows? So, unfortunately though, it doesn't really promise white any kind of tangible advantage. And I'm of the opinion a good move here to play for white, it, it black will equalize from it, but I think the best move to play for white to try to for complications is F4. But at any rate, it doesn't happen. And D5 is the thematic uh, freeing move that black will be playing in this opening. It's going to happen sooner or later, and it happens now. And what usually happens after d5, the game gets kind of tricky. I've seen uh, white fall quickly apart out of out of this position before. And but if he plays it carefully, it'll be an even game, and that's what's going to happen. It's going to be an even game for a long time. But it's one that's that can even turn on black easy enough. So if if you're careful, you can you can succeed with this, avoid losing with either white or black. Sometimes. Uh, you might be just happy to draw with with white, and like if you're playing somebody two, three hundred points ahead of you. Okay, so good. Both sides are getting developed now. I just take note of. I like to do this. Let's see where I move seven, and both sides have not de developed their queen rook and bishop. And again, this isn't such a big deal on move seven. It's when it gets down to move fourteen, eighteen, twenty. I've even seen some games where they never moved at all, and and the game went over 30 moves. Uh, you don't want to give odds of a rook and bishop. And again, it's common because uh, white will be spending four moves getting castled. And that's normal. It takes four moves to castle. So anyway, let's move on. OK, there white's moved his bishop. And now follows an interesting series of exchanges. Uh, I don't think that either side really could have gotten an advantage out of this. It's, like I say, it, it's basically exchanges that lead to an equal position. Okay, so this is curious. Now both sides are going to be capturing rooks. And now the question is, what happens if black desperado is on c2? Well, then white will desperado on g7, and, and uh, black probably doesn't want to have his king exposed, and which is not a good idea. So he captures, and then white captures. Now the net result of all, of all this is the white queen has gone way out of play over, over to a1. And here we are at move 13, and there's the black rook and bishop sitting there. They haven't moved. Okay, good. It moves. And I think this is the best square to put the queen on, because it can get developed a little quicker from c1 than uh, back on d1. And uh, like I say, I really think this position is is pretty close to even. And but Black has some long-term chances if he can get down to a bishop versus knight end game. I'll point it out again. I've pointed out several times. Bishop beats the knight in the ending. If you want to see how, look at my library. I think it's game 158. Stoltz versus Kashtan, The Hague, 1928. Uh, Kashtan demonstrates how and why the bishop beats the knight. Okay. So now this seems a little odd at first, but it isn't all that bad. But it, is it all that good? Well, the alternative is what else does does uh, Black do here? His knight is kind of misplaced. It needs to be on c6 and get to d4. Uh, it's going to take a while to do that. Uh, it's just not going to happen. But uh, the the thing I I like about it is that it uh, puts a pawn on a dark square, and that's the opposite color of the black bishop. But the thing I don't like about it, it gives black a backward pawn on the open file, and it gives white control of e4. But then again, how else is black going to make any headway here? Uh, possibly rook e6 with the idea of queen f6. So maybe trade queens? Just an idea. 
Okay, whoops, so F4. And now, as we said, white has uh, a wonderful square for the knight. Okay, so backing up the uh, backing up the queen, where's it headed? What white would like to do is get the trick knight f6 check in somehow, but black's not going to bite. It clears g5 so that uh, the white knight could go there. The white rook isn't developed yet, but the only good square for it is e th e1, so it's indirectly pressuring e5. Now, that, what am I missing? There must be a tactic with knight g5. I'm sure I'm missing something. Probably a pin. Knight g5, queen g6. Okay, so comes back with a threat. And now it looks like black's making some progress. His, he's definitely got the better development here. His problem piece is that knight. He needs to find a way to get it into play somehow. And I'm not too sure that white should have done that. What are his alternatives? See, the problem is it creates this hole on D f on uh, E3. That's the problem. It does expose the king, although it's not exactly clear how black's going to take advantage of it at this point. It also places another pawn on a white square, so if black is able to trade off a knight, he's got some potential uh, in the ending. What were the alternatives? Well, is is black threatening anything? Um, I suppose he's threatening f3, right? Okay, f3 attacks the queen, and the queen can't take on f3 because of the pin. So can white get away with g3? Let's just take a look. Okay, now if white if black can get a, get his queen into h3 he's got tremendous winning chances old white has some resources uh, here we'll we'll talk about it where does he want to go e3 well maybe not because that's he might want to try to put a knight on e3 okay so let's back it up how about how about d2 now what black should now strive for is getting the queen there as fast as possible and that you know that might just do it this might just be over uh, real quick because after knight e3 then we have rook h6 and looks like white's gonna cry I don't think he gets out of this okay so what where did the problem come from how did uh, white allow this uh, maybe losing time with the queen the queen went to uh, kind of moved around a little bit running it down to g5 and then backing it up to g4 and then bringing it back to e2 uh, that's three moves to get to e2 when it could have got there in two if that's where he wanted it so there was a theoretically a tempo loss there uh, see I just don't I'm just trying to find a, a move other than f3 to play here but it almost seems like it's necessary another idea is just accept a, a double pawn okay now you can play safely play queen takes now now the pawn is uh, is extra, but it's doubled. So how is black going to try to exploit that? Uh, it's not entirely clear how he's going to exploit that. This might have been a playable alternative. Just go down to an ending. You see, the rook is doing a good job keeping the white king in, in place, but it's also stuck there because the moment it, it moves, it's going to... Uh, let the king out and then all black can do is just check him and then white goes back and black goes back and white goes back and they call it a draw so theoretically this guy's got to come into play e8 to h5 uh, anyways black can't even play rook uh, f6 here so it's not it's not clear how black's going to attack f3 so this this might have been an alternative uh, it's not the game's not going anywhere I think it draws a fine result for white but I don't know the tournament conditions uh, McKnight's asked me to do a video for this for his two games this round and I don't know anything else so he didn't make a post to tell me anything so I really don't know if white needs a win I don't know okay so let's go back okay but f3 shouldn't cost white the game okay I just like I said I just don't like it but white still has some positional compensation he's holding e4 fine 
and it's not clear yet how black's going to break this position open and get down to that desired uh, bishop versus knight ending and here's the start threatened to stick the knight in on e3 and white needs to take it and uh, now theoretically black is threatening to gobble a pawn on e2 I don't see white's immediate compensation for that so let's see how white handles it he plays knight c3 and that guards it and it puts the knight on a square where it controls all the forward squares of the of the black bishop and both sides are taking their time which is good and here black gives a check and I don't remember the time white spent on this move but I'm pretty sure he just made a nonchalant move and and didn't realize he was making a mistake and he played queen f2 now let's just look at that he gained 21 seconds on the clock so that means he took 24 seconds on the move what he needs to play is king h1 and the game is still relatively even uh, white's a little tied down with his knight black can maybe play for b5 and b4 uh, just gain some space with the pawns on the queen side okay so b5 and what's white's plan he's kinda tied up here he could play knight d1 I don't know what all that does is secure b2 and maybe tries to oust the queen but but black can play b4 and and c3 then but then white's going to end up with uh, a couple weak pawns of course black has a couple weak pawns or black could play a5 and await developments and, pl and plan to play b4 later let white play c3 and then just back the queen up and then remove the bishop and push for c5. Black's got some greater board room here. Uh, uh, to me, it seems black's for choice. But anyway, he didn't do that and just walked into a little tra uh, trap here. And the thing is, white has two, two, two of his chessmen are pinned. The queen is pinned uh, against the king, and the g pawn is pinned. So neither one is defending f3. So, black to play and do the best it can. I think I've given it away. What do you do? Pause the video. Okay, you've come back. I hope you found bishop takes f3. And unfortunately, white just doesn't have a response. He can take on take the queen, but he, uh, but black has a, an interesting wish. Is a you know you just you don't take the queen back because then <laughs> the bishop falls to the rook. You stop and take here, and black's unfortunately close to mate, but not quite. Uh, well, wait a minute. This is tricky. What do we do? Probably blind. I looked at this earlier. Let's see. Oh, it's it's simple. You just check. Oops. Yeah, you check with the rook, and then take the rook, and then pick up the queen, and white cries. He can try knight b5 here, but. Uh, all he's going to do is maybe collect the a-pawn if black pushes c5. I don't think that's enough. And uh, so just c5 and take this. And then black's got this wonderful three-on-one uh, pawn majority. It's got to be close to winning for black. He could play bishop g5, threatening to play bishop d7, although knight could finally get out with a4 and knight b5. But white could take or black could take on b5 and be winning i i think black is seriously winning this even without the plan i just outlined okay so let's see what happened he played g3 which is actually even a little bit worse uh it gives up a pawn now that that uh since the queen is pinned too remember he if white plays pawn takes there comes rook takes g3 check so how much time did he spend on that I guess he spent the full increment because it stays at 2704. And there goes another pawn. Now White, White no longer has any pawns on the king side. He's lost them all. Just like that. And... Can White get away with b3 here? What does black do? Okay, the point of... Well, it's pretty obvious. You just play rook... Uh, c6 and 
unfortunately knight e6 to threaten mate doesn't work because the knight falls so rook c6 and I don't know you know the, the bishop at the moment doesn't have a way out yeah it does there's a pin you just take it take on b3 well the knight's fall <laughs> the knight's in trouble too so you don't even have time to defend the pawn okay so that's actually what happened main line so he takes here and there's just too many black pawns he's up uh, three pawns and there's really nothing white can do I'll just run through the final moves um, the game is over black can pick his way to win here This is fine, just trade a pawn to get Black's last pawn off. And, you know, game over. Well, it was a good game by Black. An unfortunate mistake by White uh, shortened the battle. It could have been a long, tense, tense struggle. But that's chess. And I want to thank everyone for their time, and we'll look forward to seeing you soon. i got another video or two coming this round. Take care.